Hello, powerful one. Welcome to this installment of Inner Growth with Osezwa Elimike. On this edition, we will be taking a dive into the unknown. Why are human beings so scared of the unknown? Two days back, we discussed the issue of comfort, how fear of the unknown cages people in an okay form of life. You see, if you have been used to a particular thing for so long, two, three, four, five years, please, it is time to move beyond it. Otherwise, it will cage you and imprison you. The human being is a mold breaker. You were meant to move the wall. You were meant to shift the wall and keep moving. If the wall does not move, break it and go through it. Dynamism is the nature of the human soul. It cannot afford to remain in one place for too long. If you are comfortable in one place for so long, it simply means it is not you that are actually occupying this body. What is occupying this body is the mind. The mind is running. The mind is very comfortable. When I mean mind, I'm talking about the ego dimension of the mind. That gentle guy just loves to be in one place for a very long time because safety, security are the things that keep the mind, the ego flying. But this is it. When you, by the dint of intellectual pursuits, which is the other aspect of the mind, the higher aspect of the mind, the intellect, the conscious mind, when you achieve a laudable feat by just obeying the push of your soul, using the intellect, the ego claims it. And then when he claims it, it's not saying let's do more, but he says let's build a wall here, let's build a city here, let's just relax here. That is the nature of the ego. It does not, in fact, it abhors novelty. It abhors transformation and change. Change is like the death of the ego and it will fight it. I am Osaizwa Anthony Elimihe. I am in the business of helping you grow from inside out. That is the dream. talking about the unknown fear of the unknown why do people fear the unknown now uncertainty is one of the things that people fear because they want to be very sure that whatever it is they are involved in brings them happiness that it brings them joy it brings them fulfillment and when they are not sure of it they are scared and they don't want to engage with it. Everybody's looking for certainty, all right? Everybody's looking for an assurance that whatever they are engaged in is going to be a blessing, is going to produce some positive results for them. But you see, if you are very, very involved in the idea of everything being very clear before you take a step before you move you will never go anywhere do you know why the human being is primarily from the unknown the unknown is the abode of the human being the unknown and the unknowable is the source of the human being therefore if you are scared of that which you do not understand, which you do not know. You are functioning either as mind, lower mind, which is the subconscious mind, or you are functioning like an animal. Yes, animals fear the unknown. They want to be very certain, but it is not the human being. The human being is the only entity on the planet that was designed to explore the unknown. See, the fact that a human being was born into this human body doesn't make that human being a human being. What it simply means is that in this human body, there is a human spirit resident, 
but what is the human spirit resident in this body doing on the inside? Is it awake or no? A majority of the time, this human spirit is fast, deep asleep, dreaming that it is awake. And what does it do in its dreamland? It is playing ethnicity. It is playing racism. It is playing profession. It is playing uh, cultism. It is playing all kinds of games. It's all about survivors, survivors of that is the game. The spirit is playing in its dreamland and then it thinks it's awake. Then one day, the root shock happens. There is a knock on the tenth door. And like John Don will say, one short fever passed, we wake up eternally. Just a little shock. You wake up on the other side of the divide and realize that you have been asleep all through your human body and that you never made use of this body for its purpose. Survivor is the foundation of our physical existence, but there is more to survivor. What are the things that we do on a daily basis? What are you doing to ensure that you transcend survivor? To now start thriving, to start living the life. Payment of school fees, buying of uniforms, buying of sandals, all those type, buying of books and all. They are the foundations of being admitted into a particular school. And then when you are now admitted, there are other things that follow. For example, engaging in sport, engaging in quiz competition, debating societies, all of those things. They are all part of being in the academic system but see when you now make these the basis of your presence in school you will fail out and you will get an ignoble certificate but the reality is that when you are in school you have to go beyond the peripherals you have to go beyond the licenses and the leaves that make you a student of that school you now go into the core purpose of being in school reading those books studying those books and being able to cultivate yourself into a better being than when you got into that school. That is the purpose of being in school. Now, we have come to this planet. We are living as if the real things that matter do not really matter. We don't even think about them. We are scared of those things. How? We focus on money. We focus on children, we focus on academics, we focus on career, focus on every other thing. These are the things that take the chunk, if not all of our times. Then, in the process of focusing on these things, we also get sick and then we take medication, we run from one place to the other. People have made health a major basis of their existence. You now see people, I have seen a couple of people who are vegetarians, who are vegans, and the purpose they are vegans or vegetarians is because they want to live a healthier life. These are all body restricted lifestyles. But what is the reason? What is the core purpose of being a vegetarian? What is the core purpose of being a vegan? What is even the reasons we eat? Health is part of them. Survival existence is part of them. This is what links us with the animals because animals also eat to survive. But when you now make food as a basis of your being, when you now make all other things that are necessary for the survival, sustenance, and nourishment of this body as the core purpose of your being, you've lost the core. So the question is, are you doing anything that are integrated into your core person? Do you even know who you are? Have you invested energy, time into trying to know who you are? Yes, there are those who have tried. They say it is very cumbersome, it is difficult. Yes, because there are resistances within you and around you. But it should not be a deterrence. There is nothing a human being does on this planet that is not resisted one way or another. Anything new that a human being tries encounters a form of resistance. But if you go back, like the Bible will say, when you faint in the time of adversity, your strength is little. You have to build up your energy, build up your strength to be able to stand the onslaught of resistance to that which is germane to your existence. And what is that thing? Knowing yourself. And to know yourself, you have to know your origin. You are from the unknown. And you have to venture into it every time. Now, 
how do you venture into the unknown? I wrote an article some years back, some many months, not maybe, let's not call it about maybe two or three years back on Facebook, where I talked about the gap. When you climb to the summit of the mountain of human existence, that is not the end. It is even the beginning of the beginning of that life. You have to look beyond the summit and you will see emptiness, you will see darkness, you will see nothingness. The courage that you require at that time is to plunge into it. When you plunge in, you don't get lost. Do you see what people do when their people are doing mountain diving? What do they call that sports now? They get to the summit of the mountain and they jump off and they start flying down. What gives them that confidence? One, they have a parachute. There are those who have some cords, heavy ones tied around their waist, and they just take off. They are falling down like a bird, and they are having the fun of their life. It's so lovely. They come down. Why do they take that risk? Because they know they are connected to safety. They are connected to existence. They are connected to life when they take that plunge. The plunge is the fun. Nothing there. They are not going anywhere. <laughs> okay? The love, the pleasure is in the falling. It's in cutting through the wind at top speed, flapping, coming down. That is the form. That is a metaphor for the human existence. You need to take a plunge to the unknown. There the unknown. Now, today, always. Don't be afraid of consequences because you are not alone. You are never left alone. That is the trick mind and the physical world plays on all of us. We think we are alone, but we are never alone. The human being, this human being, not this physical body, but that entity that is inside that looms larger than this physical body is just massive, is connected to this body and this body is connected to this physical space, right? By a form of magnetism. But the soul is connected to this body, one, by karma, you know, by the law of karma, which is to say, until you have exhausted the purpose for which you came to this world, you are not going to detach from this body. You're not going to die. Okay, that's one. Then two, unless you decide at some point that you are tired, you want to just go, you come up with that nocebo effect and nothing works for you again. And when your body is depreciated to a certain level, you go. Or people who take some risk, they commit suicide or kind of, those ones can kill themselves. They can end their lives before their time. But if you follow the normal flow of life, nothing is going to take your life until you have exhausted your karmic debts. You see that? And don't kill yourself because you'll be a ghost and you'll be roaming around this place. Eh? <laughs> don't try it, okay? Endure. The Bible says there is no temptation that will befall a man that a man cannot overcome. There's always power to overcome trials. So don't let the trials you are undergoing become the basis of your declining, the certificates of your existence. Live on. Now, what connects this body to your soul? Is what they call the silver cord. There is no amount of risk in your quest that you will make that will cause you to break off. When people sit in meditation and they are seeking the unknown, the unwritten information about life, that's what we do in meditation. We're looking for the unknown, the unwritten information. When I started this channel, saying I will be placing a video every single day, somebody told me, how can you do that? I said, well, I understand the unknown. I may not have what to say now but i know that as long as this body exists there is something to say there's information being downloaded into our mind on a daily basis in fact every moment by moment and when you sit to meditate you can acquire them and put them to use and when you meditate people are scared that oh their soul might leave the body yes it is meant to be paul said i die daily because that's what he does he leaves the body okay puts the weight of this body behind and then saw into the unknown region that is where we came from. You are on the highway, the king's highway to home. So you can actually explore the inner regions through meditation. But all the while, your soul, which is your spirit, is attached to this world through what they call the silver cord. A sage said that the human form is a single stringed instrument that is played by the fingers of divinity okay now there are so many 
instruments, human instruments that are never surrendered to divinity. So their strings are never played at all. You get it? Their strings are never touched, never played all through the life, all through the time they live on earth. But at the time of death, you know what touches that string? The angel of death comes and twangs it with one blow. Boom! And they wake up with the stats. They are weak. You realize that they have wasted all their lives running after the mundane, the physical, and at best the metaphysical. But they have not actually explored the spiritual, which is that which concerns them. The sorrow is painful. And that's why people, who, when they are dying, they, they are undergo so much pain because they have never really explored life. The Persians say that when a person, not even the Persian, I think the Muslims say something like that, that the pain of death at the point of death is like somebody being stung by a thousand scorpions at a time. It's so painful. But you see what? Those who have explored the inner vistas of life who have consistently meditated and sought the face of God in silence because they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty who have not been faced or disturbed by the external manifestations of life which are not realities but appearances when they are dying it is a pleasure it is ease because they have been dying on a daily basis because on a daily basis they have allow the fingers of the divine to play the chord of their being through meditation. Even when they are not shutting their eyes meditating, when they are going on about their normal business, they are thinking of God. They are thinking of God. So that pleasure, that inner pleasure, the divine pleasure is always swelling and roiling within them and they are full of bliss. That is why they can take all the challenges, even the worst form of challenges in life, they can take them. Because the power that is on their side, that is working with them, that is enveloping them, that is twanging their cord, is greater than all. The power of meditation should never, ever be underestimated. This reminds me of the track Spanish Guitar by Tony Braxton. He said, oh, I wish I were in your arm, like a Spanish guitar. You would play me through the night till the dawn. Of course, that may have its own uh, ephemeral interpretations, but in this context, we are speaking at the level of the spiritual. The human form is a single string instrument. When you surrender to the Almighty, you surrender to the unknowable, He will actually play your tune. That's why you are full of bliss all the time, because the Almighty is twanging your string, the single string, which is called the silver chord, is playing it as music. And the resonance of that music is what gives you pleasure, it's what gives you power. Not the material things of life, not the things you have succeeded in making, not the degrees you have acquired, not the spouses you've gathered, not any of those things. What gives you the pleasure, what gives you the joy, that, that gives you the power to keep living and pushing on, it is the fingers of the Almighty to me, you. And the the resonance, even after it has stopped, lasts for so many days. You get it? That is what it's all about. And the night, playing you through the night, the night is the moment of ignorance. It's also the moment we live on this side of the world, which is the physical universe, which is the world of ignorance. That's the night. And it, it will play us till the dawn, which is when we wake up either into enlightenment while still in this body or when we cross over to the other side and realize that we really haven't wasted our time. The people teased and laughed at us. So my friend, give that which concerns your spirit attention. Do what you are doing externally. It's okay to do what you are doing externally, but give attention, principal attention to that which has to do with your spirituality, which has to do with your development. You are spirit, you are not flesh. You are spirit, you are not mind. Okay? Mind and flesh are meant to serve you. Do not depend on the data from the physical environment for your being because, again, you were meant to condition those data. A human being is supposed to be the source of power for his environment. You have to power your environment, not your environment powering you. Well, 
That is all I have to tell you today to let you understand that the fear of the unknown is an aberration. It's not real. And one of the greatest fear people have is the fear of death. Now, I want to let you know this thing that death is a mere corridor. It's a non-entity. When you elevate death to the level of, to the status of an enemy, then it becomes a problem. I have heard a beautiful pastor I admire so much say that death is the enemy of God. And that, to me, is very, very abnormal to be said. Because, one, there is nothing that has life that is an enemy of the Almighty. Because the Almighty is life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. All that exists that have life are of the Almighty, because Almighty is the life of all things. So, death, if it has life, cannot be the Almighty's enemy. That's number one. Number two, death is a non-entity. Death has no life. It does not exist. There are angels of death. There are forces of death. It doesn't make them death itself. The concept of death is that the human being metamorphoses all spirits generally metamorphose from one state to the other i mean the corridor between the present phase and the next phase is called death it does not exist just like seeing the doorway through the house the doorway is a non-entity something was removed to have a doorway you get it is space in the same way death is a doorway to the other side of life it is not a being. In the final analysis, I'm simply saying that you are more than enough. You have all you need to attain your goals. You just have to move your attention away from the regular, from the known, and begin to embrace the unknown. Death is a non-entity. It cannot be your enemy. Okay? It does not exist. The devil might be a force linked with death the devil as a function is also a non-entity what is key to all of us is that even the entity that occupies the function called devil cannot survive one day without god because the power that gives life to all is the almighty himself so enjoy your life stop being afraid of nothing Stop being afraid of the unknown because you were conceived, born and executed by the unknown and the unknowable, which is the source. If you are scared of the unknown, you are scared of your father. You are scared of your source. Enough is enough. Stay strong. Stay prepared by the truth of your being and seek that which is inextinguishable, which cannot be found in books. Meditate. Learn to meditate. If you want to understand how to meditate, if you don't know it, I had a video dedicated to meditation. So watch it and try to give it a try. Some of us, if we don't meditate for two, three days, we are like dead people. So I don't understand why a human being can stay without meditating at all. Your power is in meditation. Meditation is your primary assignment on this planet, nothing else. So, selfless service and all the goodness you do are meant to support your meditative function. Thank you.